Good day. Welcome to E! Newsline Live. I'm John Fernandez. ENL is a live streaming video that addresses issues facing the management education industry. The format will be one-on-one -on -one interviews with management education leaders conducted by me. The first 25 minutes will be discussion of predetermined questions, and the final 15 minutes will be discussion of questions posed by the live audience. ENL will air bi-monthly from AACSB's world headquarters in Tampa, Florida. Now, why are we doing ENL? We plan to discuss issues facing the management education industry with a recognized expert and a live global audience in a cost-effective manner. ENL is open to the public, but AACSB member registrations will be prioritized. The first 150 registrations will be accepted for each live session. A recording of each ENL will be available on AACSB's website the day after the live broadcast. Sustainability, social responsibility, and ethical leadership are now more important than ever. But what do the concepts mean in business? How do they relate to each other? And what are the implications for business schools? Few people are in a better position to explore answers to these questions than our guest today, Steve Reinemann. Steve is currently the Dean of the Wake Forest Schools of Business and has been since 2008. He's the former chairman and CEO of PepsiCo, where he achieved remarkable success invigorated by his strong values and responsible leadership philosophy. Steve serves on the boards of Walmart, Marriott, American Express, and ExxonMobil. He has twice been named by Barron's as one of the world's most respected CEOs and as a leading champion of diversity. Dean Reinemann, welcome to Newsline Live. John, it's great to be with you. It's a real privilege to be uh, your first guest on this series, and I've uh, really been looking forward to it. Well, we're looking forward to it, too. So let's get right to it. PepsiCo generates close to $60 billion in sales in more than 200 countries. Uh, it also has a commitment to what it terms performance with purpose. Delivering sustainable growth by investing in healthier futures for people uh, in our planet. Uh, but this and other efforts uh, at enhancing corporate social responsibility have associated costs. At Pepsi and other corporations that you've observed, how has corporate executive thinking shifted regarding the role of business and society, especially in relation to the responsibility to shareholders and their publics? Well, John, I don't think it's uh, any mystery that over the last, particularly over the last 10 years, that shift from uh, looking so heavily just at the financial numbers to a broader way of looking at the business has been pervasive. And it's been because of all of the issues in our world economy. And, and uh, so I think all uh, leaders are beginning to, um, actually beginning, they've been due for some time, looking at a broader set of measures. And, and one way to think about it is uh, McKinsey recently uh, did a study on society and, uh, and business and in their recent survey, they've done it for several years, but in the recent survey, 88% uh, percent of the public said that they expected uh, companies and leaders to balance uh, financial profits with social responsibility. And uh, 70, uh, a remarkable 78% of the recipients in this study, the highest number that they'd ever recorded, said that business and government together should be having a substantial impact on society. And whether we like that or not, and whether we agree with it or not, that's what the public is saying. And as particularly as publicly held companies are responding to uh, the way the public is thinking, uh, CEOs obviously are trying to balance that. And it's very tough. I'd say it's tougher now to run a business, particularly a global business, than it's ever been because of the competing priorities that leaders have to, to manage. And we as uh, business school leaders have to find better and better ways to prepare our students to be leaders uh, in this changing economy. We expect a lot out of our leaders, don't we? We do. Your business experience spans several industries, including financial services, energy, and hospitality, uh, in addition to food and beverage. Uh, what are the differences in the ways executives in these industries have been thinking about ethics, sustainability, and responsible leadership? Well, I think over the last uh, decade, uh, as leaders have evolved in their thinking, 
there's probably more similarities between industries than there are differences. So I think the whole idea of ethical uh, leading a, a business in, in, in an ethical way, the core business, there's probably not a lot of difference. I think where the difference comes in is by, by industry. Um, generally speaking, uh, the, the leaders of businesses and industries are interested in their own business, but they're also interested in the, the good social uh, responsibility and leadership of the entire industry. And the issues are different by industry. Uh, for instance, in the oil and gas business, it's about um, you know, the sustainable nature of our, um, uh, of our assets, our natural uh, assets. In the financial services industry, it's about the growing uh, need for financial regulation. Uh, in the food and beverage industry, which I'm most familiar with, it's really uh, you know, on a global basis. It's around um, nutrition, world hunger, and this depleting supply of fresh water. And so businesses within those industries have to be thinking about those broader issues and managing their businesses in ways that uh, produce a profit, shareholder uh, expects that, but also uh, they're dealing with making sure that those businesses are responsibly acting uh, in society in ways that are relevant for that business in that industry. Yes, lots of room for the creative entrepreneurial leader. Absolutely, That's in fact, right. required to have an entrepreneurial leader. Yes. Following that thinking, a recent book by, uh, out of Babson College argues that attention to developing entrepreneurial leaders is needed if graduates are to become job creators and, and not job consumers. Much of the discussion about corporate social responsibility and sustainability seems to focus on the environment and social dimensions and suggests companies are trying to bring greater visibility to related actions. But what about the economic dimension, the potential job creation and wealth creation, especially in these recent trying times? Any thoughts on this? Oh, absolutely, John. I think that business schools uh, really have to think about, in today's slow growth global environment, are we producing the leaders that are going to make a difference in business? Because managers are, are interesting, but we should be producing leaders. And leaders, generally speaking, are going to be most uh, uh, credited for uh, innovation, for growth. I mean, it, it really is all about growth. You can manage your business for profitability, but only so long. If you aren't growing that top line through innovation, then clearly the long-term uh, ability for you to compete is going to be limited. So we in business schools need to give students the fundamental uh, understanding of how to run a business, but we also have to help them foster ways of thinking creatively about how they're going to grow businesses and start businesses and take existing businesses and change them. Uh, but again, it's about uh, really adding growth uh, to the economy because growth creates jobs, jobs create wealth, and that's really what's needed today. Yes, growth in a sustainable world. Uh, people use terms such as sustainability, social responsibility, and ethical leadership with some overlapping criteria. As a consequence, I'm not convinced that we understand how the concepts are different or whether they are different at all. Can you help us make some sense out of the terms based on your experience? Well, those terms are, in fact, I think we all probably use them somewhat interchangeably. And, and it's, um, I, I certainly am not the last word on how to define those terms. But as I try to think about this, um, particularly those three words that you threw out, um, I, I sort of think of them as concentric circles. And that whole idea of ethical business leadership is the core. And it's the way um, leaders think about their own personal conduct and the requirements that they have for the people in their company to actually operate in ways that uh, you'd be proud of, that they do the right thing, however you want to define it. But it's that moral compass that causes companies to consistently demonstrate good behavior. That's sort of the, at the core. Maybe the next ring out would be this whole idea of sustainability. And you can define sustainability in lots of different ways. I mean, the, the one that seems to be bantered around most is probably just a piece of it, which is sort of this environmental sustainability. But sustainability for a company is critical. It's sustainability of quality people. It's sustainability of the business model 
is that business model going to be able to sustain itself over time, or do you have a, a sort of a one-trick pony that you're you're clearly not going to be able to um, replicate? Uh, do you have a cost structure that is not going to work in, in environments that are slow growth? It's creating um, every aspect of your business that can sustain itself as a business. And then if you go out the next circle out, you can think about uh, this whole idea of social responsibility and how does your company fit into making the world a better place. And that starts in the local communities. If it's a small business and if it's a global business, it has obviously impact uh, around the world. But at least that's, I, I try to break it down yeah. to, to make it a little simpler, but I would be the first one to say that I'm sure there are a lot of people that would take issue with my simplistic definition of the words that you've thrown out. Well, all three right directions, and, and we have to remember there is only one world, and its sustainability is important to us as we grow. So your points are very well taken. Uh, the May-June issue of Biz Ed magazine included an article by Dean Carroll and Wu, our, our good friend, who's dean of the University of Notre Dame's Mendoza College of Business, and she's a past chairman of the board of AACSB. In this article, she offers advice to emerging business leaders uh, aspiring to do good. She also notes the recent proliferation of ratings of organizations that serve as watchdogs of corporate actions and attributes this in part to a public skeptical of companies' efforts to self-report. What types of things can companies do to uh, ensure their efforts at creative uh, creating visibility around their corporate social responsibility initiatives are not viewed as empty promises, buzzwords, or attempts at distraction? My first sort of initial reaction to that question is, um, I don't know that companies should work terribly hard at talking about trying to make that point. Uh, their actions should actually speak louder than their words. But I know there's lots of public relations folks that would take issue with that and say you should package what you do. So if you think about it in terms of how would one package that, um, I, I'd say first um, is what you're doing really good for society? I mean, is there a real purpose for what you're doing? And and if so, then then you know then it's a laudable goal to to, to try to do. Secondly, are you going to sustain this, or is this going to be sort of a uh, a project of the month. And the problem with that is the public will see through it quickly. And even more important than that, your own employees will see it through it. And um, more and more students today um, and seeking employees today are, want to work in, a, in, in an, an environment that is contributing to society. And if they feel that a company is doing is, is ethically operating and is contributing to society, they're going to have an edge in getting the best talent. And the reverse is also true. If they feel that they're not operating a successful company, an ethical company, and they're not making a difference in society, or they're just trying to do it for the publicity, they're likely to turn their employees off. And then, you know, I guess another one would be, are you going to make a difference? I mean, if you throw a little bit of money had a whole lot of things that you knew nothing about all over the world, um, it's probably a huge waste of shareholders' dollars, and you're not going to make an impact. On the other hand, if you put a substantial amount, for whatever you define that to be in your company, against a really laudable goal that you know something about and you stick with it, then it can make a difference. And I just give you a, an example. At, at Exxon, um, the company puts millions of dollars every year against uh, the development of math and science education in the world. Obviously, it helps Exxon because Exxon hires lots of people who are technologically capable in math and science, but it also helps uh, the, man, the, the, the entire economy and, and the world economy. And they've been doing it for years. So they're, they picked a good cause, they're funding it well, and they're continuing to do it. So I'd say, to me, that would be a great example of, of uh, a company that's probably doing that right. Well, we both have lineage to Exxon, and I've always uh, noted that it's a very well-managed company. And if you look at it over time, it's been successful. You can't be successful without doing the right things the right way. Like business, business schools have been criticized in recent years for emphasizing performance over purpose. What do you think about these criticisms? And, and 
But where do you see business schools moving uh, as a consequence of them? Well, I think it's real easy to take the, the, the issues of the last 10 years and just throw them all at the steps of business school, and a lot of people do that. Um, but at the same token, I don't, although I don't think that's right, at the same token, all of us that are in and around the business world have to step back after seeing what's happened and say, what could we do better? And I think business schools are part of that. And as I think about this, coming from the subject, not as an educator, but as a, as a business person, um, <clears throat> I think there are uh, a number of things that the business school curriculum can think about as they produce or try to produce and mold minds to enter what I think is the noble profession of business. And that is, are our students morally ready to lead? Do they understand what the responsibilities of a moral business leader is? And then are they technically competent to lead? And I think it's our role to uh, prepare students in both of those areas. And if there's a criticism, uh, I think the general criticism is we haven't necessarily gotten that balance correct, and we should think about how to get that balance uh, back in line. Yes, like so. It seems that you think ethical leadership uh, is most important in business. You graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy before serving as a Marine Corps officer. Uh, but you also earned an MBA from Darden at the University of Virginia and went on to serve in numerous corporate executive roles. Of course, now you serve as dean of a highly regarded uh, business school. Tell us about the similarities and core values uh, that model ethical leadership in your assessment. Well, John, I, this is actually a subject that I've spent the last couple of years since I retired thinking about because I, I really wanted to reflect on uh, 30 years in the business world, sort of what was, a, uh, what was a summary of what I thought ethical business leadership was all about and how might I characterize that in a way that made some sense. And over the years, uh, I've used a lot of different definitions and acronyms and, and uh, one of the problems of the current age, you can Google, Google and find out all the things you've said in the past. So yes, those are all out there. But as I think about them now, and as I've thought about them over the last three years, I've sort of characterized um, leaders in uh, what I call the three C's. And that is um, character being the first and, and I think the most important. And that is uh, good, effective leaders that are successful and significant, in my judgment of watching this over the years, have um, developed um, a strong moral compass and a character that recognizes right from wrong. It's not a rule book. It's really a way of, of managing yourself and your business. And uh, it, it's a simplistic way of saying it is, you know, it's doing the right thing. Well, it's much more complicated than that because obviously we get in these gray areas every day. How do you land on your feet with the right answer every day? Developing that character, I think, is critical. And, and you, you see it in, in, in personal examples. I had the fortune of working for a, a number of great leaders in my career, and one of them was uh, the former chairman of PepsiCo, Wayne Calloway. And, and he used to always talk about um, growth with integrity, profit with integrity. And he, he always set high goals, but he never, he never left his presence thinking that it was acceptable to get those accomplishments without doing it the right way. To me, that's, that's character. It's consistently having the values that really um, make a difference. Secondly is competency. And competency, uh, I think, has two very distinct pieces. One is sort of the technical academic competency to, to, to do what you do and do it well. And the second part of that is experience. Now, in the business school environment, we can give students lots of technical competence. We don't have much opportunity to give them experience. Many of them come with experience. But I think it's important to emphasize that it's not just the technical, it's also the experience that, that makes a difference. And the example I use uh, often uh, when I'm talking about this is a leader that's probably created more 
market value for uh, his company than any any leader in my lifetime is Steve Jobs. And, Jobs yeah. and here's a leader who has demonstrated both. I mean, those of us who followed him from the uh, early 80s when he started Apple, smart. Obviously, he was as bright then as he is now from an academic perspective, but he lost control of his company because he didn't have the business wisdom. And he talks now about the, the, uh, the learning he got the, the wisdom that he developed over time. So he's an example of, of what I think is a competent leader. And the last point I'd make on this, John, is that I think as we look back over the last 10 years, a lot of the criticism on mistakes that have been made have been, the, the, the characterization is that those leaders that made those mistakes didn't have character. And there's certainly a fair amount of that. But I would submit that there was some of that character that people talk about was really competence. And particularly in the financial meltdown, you know, how much of it was character, how much was competence? It was both. And it's really important to, I think, think about that. And the last one I'll just briefly mention is, is commitment. And the leaders that I've seen that have made a difference, the leaders that, that I would admire, um, are the leaders that are committed. They have this, to use an athletic uh, analogy, they have this, this goal line orientation. No matter you know what happens when they're tackled, they they're down on the ground. Even if they're a little dazed, they 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 know where the goal line is, and they're going to come up and they're going to go after that goal line because it's tough out there in the business world today. And if someone is not committed to being an ethical business leader to get results, and is just maniacal about the need to be focused, it's going to be hard to compete. So if, in the business school context, if we can help students with those three areas and graduate students that have character and have competence and are committed to being uh, good uh, leaders and to take on the noble profession of business, then we've done our job. Well, those are important characteristics and all three of them uh, add up to compass, keeping the compass pointed in the right direction. I think you've, you've given our audience uh, a very good recipe for that. Moving on, the concepts of social responsibility and ethics uh, it is not new in, in business schools, uh, but we must have learned something about how they should fit into the curriculum and, and be taught. So we have a two-part question. First is, uh, how has the teaching of social responsibility and ethics uh, changed? Uh, and uh, I'll repeat this uh, if uh, we, we get uh, detail, but and the second one is, as a result of these changes, are students interested in the not-for-profit sector or social work? Are they finding more opportunities to pursue their passions and values through business schools? Well, let me take that apart. I, I think the last part of your question, are they finding the opportunity through business school? I think the answer is yes. And I think there's a couple of reasons for that. One, uh, most of us in the business schools are talking about this whole social responsibility area, and we're introducing areas where students can contribute. Um, secondly, many of these organizations that are making a difference in the world need professional leadership. And more than ever before, uh, without that professional leadership, no matter how good the vision is, they're unlikely to succeed. So I think there are lots of opportunities for well-trained business leaders to make a difference in the social environment. And particularly, I, I point to our wonderful staff at AACSB. It's a strong not-for-profit environment that models the aspirations of business, but in the right type of industry, doing things the right way. Final question before we get to our live audience. Is, is business schools globalize their curricula, uh, training students from different parts of the world and preparing them to work across borders? Uh, what are the implications for teaching social responsibility and ethics from different perspectives, different global perspectives? Well, let me try to quickly to give you two thoughts to answer that question. One, in my business experience of working in a global organization, the differences are far uh, fewer than people think. Uh, early in my tenure as CEO, I, I wanted to develop a, a, a value statement for the company. and. Because we're a global company, I was concerned that we would, didn't want to make it just a North American type of, uh, of a, a venture. So we put together a committee of 
30 people from around the world uh, to help formulate uh, what really existed in the company, but we wanted to formalize it. And then after we put that down, um, I wanted to sort of test drive it. So I went to Asia and, and I went to Latin America and Europe and had individual focus groups myself. And you know, it was a good lesson for me because I realized that the basic character uh, values are universal and people want to hear what does a company stand for. And um, we committed it to writing. I actually probably still have a, a card with it that we're, uh, you know, we actually committed it to writing. We gave it to people in all languages around the world. And, and surprisingly, maybe not so surprising to some people, um, there was very little difference in the acceptance of this around the world and much more um, acceptance that, yeah, we wanted to rally around something that, that this global company believed in. So I, I think as we think about educating students, um, international students and, and US students that are gonna work in a global world, um, I, I think it's important to articulate what those values are, and I think we have to be sensitive, but not shy away from the fact that there can be um, very distinct global uh, values to, to do that. Yes, well, good points. Um, more similarities in peoples around the world uh, than differences. Uh, we all want the same things at a, a basic state. Um, one of the most important uh, comments that I think we could we could share is the importance of, of business schools and training leaders to develop individuals in the developing world because if we uh, if we make business and we're employed and we're fed there's a lot less opportunity uh, to think about things that might be disruptive uh, to our neighbors. Well uh, that completes our predetermined questions which uh, Steve has answered so eloquently um, we will now take questions directly from our live audience. Uh, we will begin right from, uh, this is coming from uh, the great state of Michigan in the United States. I don't know if it's a Wolverine or a Spartan. Uh, today, sustainability and CS are, are not required uh, in the AACSB accreditation standards. Do you feel this should be considered uh, in the near future? Um, I think that's an especially good question, Steve, as you sit on the Blue Ribbon Committee for Accreditation Quality, which is currently reviewing the standards. Well, that's a great question, and I don't know that I would uh, uh, say that it should, um, because um, I, th I, th I think, for the most part, um, that's a, a subject that, uh, although important, may not necessarily be um, one of those sort of core values that we should be training our students to do. Uh, and, and if we keep tacking issues onto uh, the requirements, um, I think it's going to take away the creativity that schools have to become specialists in certain areas. So, uh, you know, if the school really thought that this was an area they wanted to specialize in and students wanted to gravitate to that area, that would be something that I think would, to me, would, would, uh, would be maybe more attractive. Right. I had a conversation recently with the dean of the oldest business school in the United States, so that'll send everyone scurrying to Google. <laughs> um, if we don't know, most of you do. Um, and his point was simply, essentially, the, the train had left the station that all schools must produce responsible ethical leaders. It's a predetermination. And I think it, it is a good question. Well, if that's the case, then it's an important outcome uh, of those that graduate from accredited schools. How we define that without legislating to schools, but encouraging that philosophy, I, I think is, is pretty important. So we, we have our work cut out to do to get it right. Well, I, I, and in your previous question, I was I was thinking of the answer in a more uh, narrow way of environmental uh, oh, okay. sustainability yeah. rather than uh, than the moral side. I actually, if if your if the question was intended to be talking about you know 
does do we need to have a better balance in schools towards this ethical and and competency side and should that be part of the accreditation um, i would have to say yes i think it should and and uh, i think there's certainly room within the current accreditation to to talk about that but but i do think it's a very important piece good, good point good point i think that distinction is important this next question comes from the northeastern united states and uh um, we, we haven't uh, defined schools further than that or other individuals. Business schools get a lot of the blame when things go wrong in business. Yet many schools make great strides in teaching sustainability and ethics. How can we do a better job of letting the public know about this? Well, I think, uh, you know, in, at the end of the, the day, uh, the results are in the leaders we produce. And, uh, you know, if we're doing it right, and our leaders are coming out with the proper preparation, they'll be effective in the marketplace. But I, all that said, I can tell you what we're doing to redefine this effort at Wake Forest, and it might be helpful to other schools as they're thinking about it. Um, I, I think that the ethical piece has to be as rigorous as the, the technical competence piece. So what we're looking at it is sort of in four parts, starting with the application process. And then, you know, we think that having a, a, some sort of a screen against um, getting the right ethical leaders in the door is critical. How we do that, I'm not, we're not completely sure, but it, it, it probably will be something like some of the leading companies do today in terms of screening people for cultural and ethical fits in the company. Um, but there's only so much we can do when we have a student for one or two years in terms of helping them become ethical leaders. If they don't really want to be an ethical leader, then that's probably not the student we want to bring in. If, if their motivation is strictly you know, to be the first millionaire in their class and at any cost, then that's probably not the student that we want in our business school class. So we screen them out. Secondly is the education process. And this is where I might get myself in a little trouble, John, because I'm not an educator, so I'll, I'll describe it from layman's terms. I think we should be teaching ethics both vertically and horizontally. Vertically in, in very um, rigorous classes that talk about ethical business decision making and facing ethical challenges and case studies in ethical um, alternatives and, and helping students really think through in a very dedicated way how to formulate their, their thought process. And then on a horizontal basis, weave ethical business decisions into every subject and every class so that it's not something that just comes in over the top. It's sort of a way of thinking. It's, it's part of every decision you make. Then the last thing we're thinking about is having a capstone course in every one of our programs where students would um, have to pass this capstone course in rigorous ethical challenges. And it's sort of a certification, so to speak, that we're gonna be graduating ethical business students coming out of the program. And this is a big process. We're not gonna be able to get it done overnight, but we believe that when we do that, we'll have done a better job in producing those ethical leaders. And when we do that, those leaders will go out in the marketplace. And there, to your question, they'll be the best ambassadors or ethical business decision making because they'll actually be able to show people uh, from their own learning um, what, what a leader does. Yeah. What you say in the end produces a sustainable career and I think that's what all students want in the end. So I, I hope they heed those words of wisdom. Uh, this question comes from the United Kingdom and we thank you for spending your evening with us. Uh, which region of the world do you feel is, is leading uh, the effort to address sustainability and corporate social responsibility in business schools? I think I know the answer to that. <laughs> well, I, I think that um, schools all over the world are, are actively wrestling with how to address this subject. And I would probably be remiss to say that there's one area uh, that's making more progress than the other. Uh, 